Thank you very much. Yes, I'm going to present this case where left atrial appendage occlusion is guided by ice. The golden standard right now is to use transits of a GL echocardiography, and in most centers we use general anesthesia uh, so that the patients can tolerate the, the GOE examination. But uh, that means we are dependent upon the anesthesiology team, and I think that's a limitation. So that is one of the attractive things with ICE, that you can do, do it in a local anesthesia and be independent upon anesthesiology. So this was a 76-year-old female uh, with AF, hypertension, diabetes, and a prior stent in the right coronary artery. In July 2015, uh, she suffered a stroke being on warfarin, and the treatment was to exchange warfarin for dabigatran, but that was not efficacious because, again, in September 2015, she had a new stroke on dabigatran. The neurologist uh, definitely looked very close to her carotid artery, but there were no significant disease, and they felt that uh, her sources for the strokes were AFib and uh, uh, thrombi from the left atrial appendage. Uh, and definitely this patient has a very high risk uh, of a stroke based on uh, the chad svask score. So a few weeks ago, uh, we closed this uh, appendage guided by ICE. In all cases, I use uh, a pre-procedural CT scan because I think that is uh, the superior image modality to, uh, to have an understanding of the left atrial appendage anatomy. In this case, you see a quite straightforward appendage, uh, almost a tube-like appendage. You get the distance to the upper pulmonary vein. Here, it's a quite large pulmonary vein you get the uh, relation to the circumflex uh, artery, and you can gain a lot of information from the CT data sets, especially when you go to the multiplanar reconstruction here. Uh, you can have, um, this corresponds to the AP view, you can tilt it a little bit cranially, you can tilt it here in RAO, and you can uh, definitely obtain uh, what would you see in a RAO 30 degree 10 cranial fluoro projection. You can uh, definitely choose the most optimal working uh, projection for your uh, procedure. So this is uh, what we very often use, the 30 degree RAO 10 cranial, and you have all the anatomical markers here with the ridge, with the upper pulmonary vein, circumflex, and uh, so forth. So, in this case, uh, we close the appendage with the amulet, and uh, the amulet is sized according to the diameter of the lobe. Um, if you have a 20 millimeter device, that means that uh, the lobe diameter here is 20 millimeters, and the way we size this device is that we want to choose a device that is three to six millimeter larger, uh, in the lobe here compared to the landing zone, that's one criterion, and the other one is that we should choose a device where the disc is so big in diameter that we cover the whole uh, orifice. So uh, on the CT, you can go into transversal views and you can have an fast view here of the orifice, and like in the majority of cases, you'll not see a circular structure, but an oval structure, and here you see the minimal and the maximal uh, diameter of the orifice, which is 14 and 23 millimeter. And if you slide your image plane inside the appendage uh, about 12 millimeter, which is the landing zone, you will obtain a cross-sectional view of the landing zone, which is normally more circular than the orifice. And here we have uh, a diameter of 14 versus uh, 15 as the largest uh, diameter. So uh, can I have the first question put up here? So giving an orifice of uh, a maximal diameter of 23 and a landing zone a maximal diameter of 15, which size of an amulet device would you choose in this case? 18, 20, or 22? Please vote. 
Okay, so the majority would choose a 20 millimeter device and that would also be my choice. For this case, when we have the smaller amulet devices, we tend to oversize five to six millimeter, whether if we have larger devices, we can go down maybe to three millimeter because we have more volume of the loop. And uh, if you look at the disc size of a 20 millimeter device, that is 26 millimeter, so you would definitely cover this orifice, uh, which is uh, 23 millimeter in diameter. So uh, we saw before the two options uh, for ice catheters, the St. Jude Viewflex, a nine French catheter, and the Acunav Siemens catheter, which is an eight French uh, catheter. I think you obtain the best image quality with the St. Jude catheter, but on the other hand, you have a little bit better maneuverability with the Acunav, especially if you look at the tip of the ice catheter, the tip uh, of the Viewflex catheter is a little bit longer, which makes it a little bit more difficult to rotate around and sweep around, uh, whereas the tip here is a little bit sh shorter. So there are advantages and disadvantages with the two types of catheters. But now the ice catheter has been advanced to the right atrium here. I use the right femoral vein, both for the delivery of the LAA device and also for the ice catheter. There's no problem in, in having a, a 12 French and a 9 French sheath in the same uh, vein. Uh, so it is here now in the right atrium and you look at the typical view here where you have the tricuspid valve, the right ventricular inflow, you have the pulmonary valve, the aortic valve here and you just have to rotate a little bit clockwise from this position then you will obtain the septal view here and you can see the inferior part of the septum here and you can also see distantly here the left atrial appendage and in this case a quite large left upper pulmonary vein and I think you will realize that the distance here is uh, quite large so maybe the right atrium is not the optimal window to the left atrial appendage. It's easy to see uh, when you are on the septum with your needle and uh, you can uh, see a nice tinting and you can do a safe puncture. You can, of course, rotate around and also look at the anterior aspect or you can use fluoro to be sure that you are also pointing posteriorly. So now uh, the uh, transeptal sheath is in the left atrium, in fact, in the left upper pulmonary vein. You can uh, see that by the, the saline injection here, creating bubbles in the left atrium coming from the left upper pulmonary vein. And on fluoroscopy, this is the position of the probe, uh, the ice probe still in the right atrium. So next step is to take the ice probe to the left atrium and you can use the guide wire here as a, a pathway, just slide the ice catheter along uh, the guide wire. And it's not necessary to create a new, new hole. You can use uh, the defect that was created by the transeptal puncture. So just slide it along the guide wire. It is helpful if you have a biplane system, but any way you can do it with monoplane, you just have to rotate a little bit to make sure you are definitely parallel to the uh, wire. And then you advance the tip of the ice probe to the region of the left upper pulmonary vein, just outside the uh, right, to the, the left upper pulmonary vein. And then you obtain uh, nice images of the left atrial appendage that uh, really resembles what you have in your fluoroprojection projection and what you have in 45 degree view uh, on TE, so you can again have all the anatomical markers, the left upper pulmonary vein ridge, the orifice, the circumflex artery here. So the next uh, step for me is to exchange the transeptal sheath with the delivery sheath that I put into the left upper pulmonary vein and uh, you can also easily see that by the ice probe. You can retract the ice probe a little bit uh, and fold the neck a little bit posteriorly, then you look into the entrance of the left upper pulmonary vein here with the delivery sheet of the amulet device being in the vein. 
And if you want to, you can also do uh, sizing by ice. I don't think it's too meaningful just to size in one or very few planes. Again, using pre-procedural CT, you can, uh, you can uh, take all this matter away from the procedure itself because you have already done that uh, the day before by your CT imaging. But if you want to, you can do supplementary uh, sizing by your eyes. So then I put my pigtail marker catheter in the delivery sheath, and you can see that uh, the tip of the pigtail is now in the upper pulmonary vein, and I'm slowly retracting, and you can easily follow when it drops down to the upper pulmonary vein ridge here. Now it's in front of the left atrial appendage. I like being in front with a pigtail that's a soft structure, and it's not a, a stiff, um, uh, sharp wire. So I just put the pigtail marker catheter into the left atrial appendage like this, and then uh, the sheet follows uh, um, the pigtail. And uh, you can see here that is the position of the ice probe. I am just here at the uh, entrance of the left upper pulmonary vein looking to the region of interest here, which is uh, the left atrial appendage, and uh, you can ha see the Angio here. So uh, now it's time to put in the amulet device and it's inside now the neck of the left atrial appendage and the ball has been, or the lobe has been expanded to the ball configuration and you can even see some of the fabric in the ball. And you can uh, see the circumflex artery, you can see the orifice and uh, you will now expose the lobe and uh, this is um, how the lobe was expanded, and uh, I want you to look at this image and uh, tell me uh, next set of questions whether you find this uh, position of the lobe uh, good or bad. Or so, can we uh, see the next que questions? Is the lobe of this amulet in a good position? Yes, no, or I don't know. Yeah, not everybody is happy. I'm not happy uh, either because I think it, it was too superficial. You saw that the low part of the lobe was very near to the orifice, so you have to go a little bit deeper. So again, the lobe has been expanded to the ball configuration, and now it is exposed again in the neck, and you can see it's a little bit deeper now. You have the circumflex artery here, and we have more than two-thirds of the lobe uh, distal to the circumflex artery, so now I'm more happy with the position. And then you can expose the disc of the device, uh, and you see in this projection you cover the whole orifice, you have the disc all the way up to the upper pulmonary vein ridge, and you have it down here with a good uh, position to the left atrial wall, and you are definitely free of the mitral valve as well. So uh, this is how it looks on fluoro by expansion of the lobe and expansion of the disc and control angio, angio before release and then release and final result on angio and final result uh, on ice where you can see the details again, the lobe distal to the circumflex, the uh, disc covering the whole orifice, no interference with the left upper pulmonary vein flow, no interference with the mitral valve. I think in all cases, being so close to the left atrial appendage, you can get uh, very good uh, images of, of, uh, of the appendage. This is just to show you a few other anatomies. This is a large left atrial appendage again with the delivery sheath inside the neck and uh, very clearly the circumflex here as an important anatomical marker. And the lobe expanded and uh, you can really obtain high resolution near field images. You can see the fabric inside so the lobe of the amulet device and you can also clearly see uh, the disc here again and the relation to the mitral relation to the circumflex. Another example here where you have a 
a little bit of a lobe coming off here in the roof of the neck, and again, the ball exposed in the neck region with the circumflex uh, beneath it, and again, very clear images of the disc and fabric in the disc and uh, good wall contact here. So, in my view, uh, ICE is definitely an alternative to TOE. I find it is optimal in combination with pre-procedural CT because I don't like to sweep too much around with the ICE probe uh, being in the left atrium, and I, see, I think all the sizing issues can be done by CT, which is really the superior uh, image modality for sizing. And what is the advantages uh, with this technique? You can do it in local anesthesia. You have a patient that is awake. The patient can tell you if there's any pain or anything that uh, bothers the patient during the procedure. You don't need an anesthesiology team, no general anesthesia. You only need one cardiologist. You can save cath lab time. You can safely do your transeptal puncture. You can look for pericardial effusion. You can obtain a sizing, but uh, not as optimal as with CT. You can get very, very good images, near field images of the landing zone of the orifice and of the disc, and you can look for period device leaks by a color flow. So what are the disadvantages? I think it's, it's, uh, it adds some kind of complexity to the procedure because you have to handle yourself the ice probe and also the, the sheath. So uh, definitely it's a little bit more complex and there will be a learning curve for this. And it can also be a drawback that there is a price for the ice uh, probe. But on the other hand, you save money for the anesthesiology team and you can do more procedures. So uh, I would like to ask you if uh, you might in the future consider using ICE because it can allow you to do uh, everything yourself. You don't need the anesthesiology team and you can do your own imaging or B, if I can do it without the anesthesiology team, that's uh, the, the main advantage, or C, uh, or three, I do not consider using ICE in the future. So please vote. Yes, so uh, half of the audience uh, is not scared by using ICE, that's nice. So thank you for your attention.